Welcome back to my video series, Living with MDS 5Q Deletion. I'm Ann, and this is part five of my series. In the fourth video, I discuss how I managed my MDS while on Revlimid and what happened when Revlimid no longer worked. The focus of this video is when my diagnosis went from low risk to high risk MDS, which led to chemo infusions and blood transfusions in a necessity for a bone marrow transplant. November of 2023, while in Florida, I went to the Moffitt Cancer Center. I was by myself, which was not a smart idea, and I saw a specialist who, pre who proceeded to tell me that I would need chemo infusions immediately when I returned home from Florida in December of 2023. I told the specialist that I wanted a bone marrow transplant, not another Band-Aid fix. He then discussed meeting with the bone marrow team. Um, the entire appointment was difficult and it was confusing, um, not one that I was prepared for. I checked the doctor's notes afterwards on my portal, hoping that I would better understand my condition. The note was vague and it did not give me an answer as to my prognosis. I returned home to Michigan in December where I met with my oncologist. I asked him to call the specialist at Moffitt to clarify the next steps. They discussed the chemo infusions and agreed it was necessary along with the blood transfusion, transfusions due to my hemoglobin uh, was at eight. My oncologist also gave me some tough love and said, you either need to stay home in Traverse City, Michigan, or you need to stay in Florida. You cannot travel back and forth. After contemplating where I would get the most help, especially because I lost losing my husband, who was my caretaker, I decided to stay in Michigan, where I have many lifelong friends and it is where three out of four of my children reside. So my oncologist then referred me to the University of Michigan to see an MDS specialist and to meet with the bone marrow team. The appointment was scheduled for January 17th, uh, 2024. I had two friends who are RNs and my daughter who is also an RN come with me to the appointments. Thank God for my dear friends who prepared me for these appointments. They advised me to have all my caregivers set up and a place no farther than 10 minutes from U of M where I would stay for three months after the transplant. It all fell into place. At the appointments, I was surrounded by caring people and providers. I met with the nurse who was who is my coordinator, then the MDS doctor, and finally the bone marrow team. They were all amazing. I found out on that day that I had high risk MDS and without treatment, my prognosis is a year and a half survival. Uh, and the bone marrow transplant was needed to be done as soon as possible before my MDS progressed any farther. They also warned me to stay healthy because even a cold can prevent you from getting the transplant. I do believe that we were all surprised at how quickly my MDS progressed as it really is an unpredictable disease. U of M began the search for a donor. I started on azacitidine um, through a port in December. I was able to get the chemo at home. Um, the chemo is given to destroy any cancer cells and prepare you for the transplant. Initially, I did have an allergic reaction to the products that they used to clean the port. Uh, chlorhexidine and the regular Tegaderm patch. So uh, it, what it did is it caused extremely itchy hives. So they switched it to the alcohol swipes and a diamond tegaderm patch. 
Um, the infus infusions were for seven days in a row with three weeks off. I had some minor side effects like nausea and GI upset. However, after the second round of chemo, overall, I was feeling much better. As of February, my hemoglobin is now at 10 and I no longer need the blood transfusions. In preparation for the transplant, I went back down to the U of M to have several tests, including a pulmonary test, an EKG, an echocardiogram, and I met with a social worker. Again, it's so important to take care of yourself through this, in, through this journey of MDS. So here I sit today, four years after diagnosis, praying for a donor. 10 out of the original donors whom I had a 99% match fell through. I now have two other possible matches being tested as I make this video. They also tested my children in case they can't find a full match. I'm not discouraged as donors are put on the registry every day. Today I want to leave you with three tips. Reach out to others and don't give up. Be patient with the process and thank your caregivers. That's it for this video. Stay tuned as I plan on videotaping my journey as I continue on to the bone marrow transplant at the University of Michigan. To all, I wish you many blessings along the way. Praise to all the donors who signed up with Be The Match, who are saving lives every day. Uh, prayers for a match for me. Subscribe to my channel if you would like to continue this journey with me. God bless you until we meet again.